My name is Douglas R. Wilson. I am a retired technical sergeant with the United States Air Force. I served at Karshi Kahanabad Air Base, Uzbekistan in December of 2001. I remember stories about radiation, uh, chemical weapon remnants, nerve gas, and a possible nuclear weapon accident the Soviets had at K2 while they were there. Um, I've seen the pictures of the radiation and chemical agent warning signs and heard from other friends who have served at K2 in subsequent years about becoming ill or contracting cancer from their service. I was a jet engine mechanic maintaining and repairing the motors on C-130 special operations and cargo aircraft. When I was medically retired after becoming unfit for further military service in 2013, I became a military contractor maintaining special operations aircraft. I had injured my knee and required surgery to repair it in November 2016. My wife took me to the hospital while recovering from the knee surgery because I was not healing and recovering as they said I would. I had also be begun having uncontrollable tremors and shaking in both of my arms and legs. The hospital did many tests to find out what was wrong. They scanned my brain and discovered a three millimeter tumor inside the right cerebellum, which is in the back of the brain attached to the brain stem. I was transferred to a different hospital that had a neuroscience center. After they studied the tumor, they cut open my skull and did a biopsy of the tumor. The biopsy was sent to MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Their pathologist tests tested and came back with an inconclusive result. My local oncologist said uh, he was certain it was primary central nervous system lymphoma, T-cell, a form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I was treated with chemotherapy using a very strong chemo cocktail so it could penetrate the blood-brain barrier, which is the filter between the body and the brain and attack the tumor. Because the chemotherapy was so powerful and strong, I had to be hospitalized to support my body systems through the course of treatment. After six cycles of chemo, uh, I was referred and sent to the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida to receive a stem cell transplant. I was, uh, I was told that the stem cells would help fight the, and kill the cancer. <clears throat> During the testing and medical evaluations and the pre-workup testing for the transplant, another brain scan showed the tumor had returned. My family and I prepared and I went through a second brain surgery to remove another similar tumor in July 2017. This ordeal was a horrible roller coaster of emotions for me, my wife, and my three children who did not know if daddy was dying or would live. Okay kids, this is the end. Daddy won't be here much longer. He is going to be with Jesus. Oh, but guess what? A miracle. Daddy is doing much better and will recover. The uncertainty of life for my wife, Crystal, was even more difficult. She had to manage us traveling between cancer centers with the kids, keeping up with their schooling, and taking care of me, managing my care with cancer centers. My military wife was accustomed to deployments and running a household alone. The constant threat of becoming a widow, a single parent, and figuring out how to support our young family if I was if I died was incredibly stressful. The uncertainty required constant planning to handle the crisis at hand or an impeding irrevocable change of our identities and lives. Having been through this once made it worse and more difficult for my family the second time. The impact of these events during the children's impressionable years haunt our family even to this day. My Moffitt Cancer Center oncologist determined uh, I had an autoimmune disease called Clippers. Clippers is chronic lymphatic inflammation with pontine prevascular enhancement responsive to steroids. A type of encephalitis or cancer of the nervous system itself. We considered who should treat this and chose the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida as the best people for treating it was at the Mayo Clinic, they were sure it was can uh, at the Mayo Clinic, they were sure it was cancer. For a time, we continually went back and forth between Moffitt and Tampa, and Mayo and Jacksonville. 
my oncologist recommended we go to MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston to give them a chance to sort everything out. They reviewed everything and conducted their own independent assessment, including looking again at the original biopsy they had received back in November of 2016. After much thought and discussion decided it was not cancer, but again, an autoimmune disease that they could not figure out. It was so difficult to diagnose because the disease did not resemble anything anyone had experience with, had seen, or even considering the expertise of MD Anderson, the Mayo Clinic, and the Moffitt Cancer Center. Armed with a fresh evaluation from MD Anderson in hand, we went back to Mayo who sent us to their hematology department. I, I say we because every time I had to travel for cancer, involved either packing up our entire family for travel during treatments, depending on who relatives who lived in the treatment center areas, or sometimes it meant bringing in family and friends to care for our kids in our home while we were gone uh, long trips on the road. After one of the Mayo Clinic treatment review boards uh, reviewed my records, I was assigned a new diagnosis of primary central nervous system lymphoma. We were off to the races with a new treatment of strong, super strong uh, brain chemo to knock the cancer down and bring it under control. When the frequent brain MRIs showed the cancer cells had been eradicated, again, I finally underwent another stem cell transplant in, two, in April of 2019. In the stem cell treatment, they harvest my own stem cells. Then it was time to destroy every white blood cell in my body with extremely strong doses of various chemo drugs. This kills off my entire immune system. Then they introduced my clean stem cells to regenerate my immune system essentially rebooting, rebooting the immune system from scratch without even as much protection as a newborn would receive from their mother's immune system. Today I am in remission with no signs of relapse. Unfortunately, uh, the cancer concentra uh, concentrated and permanently changed my brain over the three years that I battled it. A significant amount of permanent damage was done. My balance, mobility, and coordination are partially destroyed, affecting my walking, ability to react to things um, happening around me. I will never drive again. My cognitive deficits leave me without skills to protect myself and others were I to drive. I must use a walker for home or for short distances. Thankfully, I have an electric wheelchair, which gives me some freedom of mobility, because I cannot drive, I have no other means to travel. I use my battery operated mobility chair to go the mile and a half each way to physical therapy twice a week and back. This is scary at times because in my town there are no sidewalks everywhere, so I must ride it on the road in most places. Physical therapy helps me not lose any more of the flexibility or strength that I have left. Needless to say, this is pretty much my whole day because I have to rest after the ride back and forth in every kind of weather and also after the treatments. All in all, I am grateful to do what I must and am thankful for being alive to have some sense of normalcy in my life. Grateful and so proud of the love of my life, a school teacher, I am incredibly blessed to have the chance to be a part of raising my children and celebrating their victories and having fun with them. I will not ever be able to work again, so my new job is being the teacher for each of my children, helping them out with school during this pandemic. Helping them out with school during this pandemic, sorry. I am always looking for ways to help and try to lead a semi-normal life. What would help more than anything is to get my brain cancer service connected with the VA. Even though I have a letter from my oncologist stating unequivocally my cancer was caused by toxic exposure at Karshi Kahanabad Air Base, the VA continues to deny my claim. They treat all K2 veterans like they did the Vietnam veterans. They are trying to deny us until we die. If I can service connect my cancer, it will open up a wide range of services, programs, and benefits the VA offers. 
benefits my family needs desperately, um, especially now as my ability to help provide for my family is only a distant memory. Um, so far, we've had to pay out of pocket for everything on the salary of a school teacher.